Hello, this is GMA Tank, and this is the Painting with Commentary video for episode 23 of Paint to Life, the Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid Megazord Deluxe figure. If you missed the episode, you can check it out in the comments below. Otherwise, let's go through with definitely the strangest video I have made thus far on Paint to Life. These were the custom figures. They were from the Hyper Force expansion of the Heroes of the Grid game. Um, so starting out, I went to source what these figures actually looked like, what their costumes looked like, and you can see in that image there, that's what I found and that's what I worked with. Their backs would be full black. So let's get started. I started by priming these figures with a Corax white priming coat from the Citadel painting system. And this is gonna be a very rudimentary paint job. So a couple things up front. Uh, it's bad in black, yes. Uh, one, I actually painted these about a month or so ago. My filming technique has gotten a lot better. As you can see, I wasn't quite squared up. And I apologize in advance for some of this footage being off the screen. Um, it's not ideal. So, I offset that by saying this is a pretty simplistic paint job. And that's why I made the episode about it. Because realistically, guys, even if you're relatively new to this, painting these miniatures is very straightforward. I mean, it's I, technically it's up to the, um, you know, the discretion of how you want to paint them. But the person who commissioned this for me said, I want them primary colors, you know, just, just like their uniforms, true to form, just like the TV, as we'll see later with the Megazord. So... It's just a matter of throwing black all over this black ranger. Um, he's got this uh, she. I should, uh, was it she? I you know on a, I don't know. I think this might be a female ranger. Um, so black and eschen gray just for the off black side. I like eschen gray. It works for the pants and the uh, parts that are not true black. It, uh, it's very noticeable in person, just the two-tone. Again, I apologize, and I'll say this time and time again during this video for the um, not being centered, but again, I'm working on that for current videos. So what we want to take a look at is, and I want to highlight because again, my painting footage leaves a little to be desired, is some of the parts that aren't covered in the footage. For example, those diamonds on his knees, if you see the source, or her knees, sorry, the source footage shows they're metallic, like almost like metallic knee pads or shin guards, as well as the pauldrons are metallic. And also, I didn't really highlight how I painted the weapons in the episode. Um, Mephist in red is going to be the red color I use, it hit this zigzag up the middle. That's kind of a fun little bit that splits the eschen gray from the black. You see the, the pants are also eschen gray. Under the Red Ranger, Mephist in red again, that's the red I'm using for all of this. So back to what I was saying, the weapons didn't get any love, but it's the same palette across the whole paint job. Basically, Abaddon Black, Mephist in red, Lead Belcher, as well as the, um, the other silver, Storm Host silver. Uh, we'll see what the blue and the pink and the yellow are as they come up in their individual rangers. And it's those paints across the whole job. A little bit here and there for some layering, but not much. Again, it's very elementary, true to form to the Power Rangers costumes themselves. So, um, you can see here, leaving the parts that are going to be silver alone, painting half of his chest piece red, leaving the other half for the black. I must say, I did like the Hyperforce Ranger design. That lightning bolt up the middle is pretty cool. Um, and also, I couldn't find much source material that showed the back of the Ranger. You can see I'm painting his back red here. Um, I eventually will go and paint over that after finding some animations from a video game where you can select the Hyperforce Rangers and it appears the backs are indeed black. So I had to paint over that back red uh, later. So Lead Belcher, every Power Ranger has a visor with like a dino imprint on it. Again, I don't have great footage of it, but understand that I'm using a Lead Belcher for the visor, Storm Host Silver for the trim of the visor, and then red for the dinosaur eyes. Uh, but it's mostly just silver and um, Lead Belcher for the details. Uh, the weapons, I started them all Lead Belcher, and then I put accents on using the colors of the Rangers. So his claws are all are they have you know a red handle and um, their silver claws with some retributor gold also just to give the claws a little bit of a yellow look to them uh, while still being metallic again there wasn't tons of source material for hyperforce rangers and apparently there was only one season i didn't have access to the show i just did my best with the images you can find online anytime you're painting anything it's best before you start to surf the internet and find 
either examples of other people who have already painted the same things. And I do that not so much because I want to copy them, but I do that because I want to make sure if I thought something was a headpiece and it turned out to be dreadlocks, <laughs> you don't want to paint someone's dreadlocks gold and find out later that was supposed to be um, hair, right? So that's a good way to start. You can see the power coin in the center, the little V on the belt is going to have um, um, a lead belcher and then the kind of a, a gold or a blue power coin. We'll see in the finished picture. Uh, so moving on to the Yellow Ranger, our first Averlin Sunset is the yellow paint I used for that. I think it's a good paint to use. He's got this big hammer. Uh, it's going to be lead belcher as well, but there is some extra yellow in there. And um, I also used a separate off yellow, but I couldn't remember what it was. But again, these are um, um, pretty straightforward color choices for yourself to use if you're following this kind of simplistic style. Um, someone asked me, not in the channel, but just someone asked me, well, this guy already was yellow, so why did you prime him and then paint him yellow? Why didn't you just paint the other parts? And that might seem pretty straightforward to us, but I'll just mention it. I mean, guys, like, be honest, that yellow is like a plastic color. It's not paint. It's just colored plastic. I'm putting paint on and it would look like, see those boots I'm painting now? If I just painted them over his yellow plastic, one, without primer, the paint would flake off. And two, it'll look like boots that are painted on top of his skin. You know, there won't be a good def definition. So, no, you have to prime, especially for different plastics like this, that might be super slippery and, and uh, without a good prime coat, you're not gonna get adhesion from your paints. So always use primer now. Another question people say is, well, why use, you always use Citadel primer, why? It's $20 a can, that's a ripoff. I can get a can of white spray paint, Dural from Canadian Tire from Home Depot for five bucks and you're paying 20. Trust me, you buy one can of primer, it'll do you 15 models. It's super fine particulate, all that, look how gray it almost looks in this video. Um, that's the Corax white primer. Uh, it, the, the particles are so small, they go on in the little crevices, they don't glob, it's beautiful, it's perfect. It's what you need. See the bottom there? How the yellow plastic comes out from underneath? So don't cheap out. You're going through all this endeavor, you paid $100 for the board game, you're gonna spend 10, 15 hours painting all these sons of bitches. Why would you cheap out and sp save yourself $10 just to sp spray primer on that's gonna be all globby and potentially flake, I don't know. I've never used anything but Citadel for priming. Um, and I'm not trying to be a snob, it's just, you know, go the extra mile, keep the consistency up with your quality. So as you can see, the yellow and black Bumblebee Ranger, he's got his shoulder pads that have already been silvered. You know, the detailing in this is, the, the, the miniatures are well cut. Um, the prints, they, they look nice and, and they're not very complex, but they have nice sharp lines that are easy to paint. And onto Blue Ranger, and we're using the Altorf Guard Blue for the Blue Ranger. Again, once you paint one of these Rangers, the rest just fall in line, right? So I'm painting his legs, and I'm going to crack the bat in black to the second side. Again, his pole arm starts lead belcher, and then I put a couple other blues. Um, I found some source image of how those weapons are to be colorized, and I colored them that way. So again, um, you either use your imagination, or if you want to stay true to the source material, go looking for some images on the web to kind of drive your drive your imagination. So again, he had a pretty complicated helmet and I didn't capture it all on this film, um, but the finished, you know, see it starts with a big blue and then you go back over it with the lead belcher for the visor and then the storm host silver for the lines. Again, his boots. So a lot of people were asking me, how is this game? Is this game any good? And I don't know. I wasn't really a Power Rangers fan. Um, I've seen some people say it's not good. The reviews, though, have it pretty positive. 82% at BoardGameGeek.com, which is pretty positive. 
I'm sure it's like most games, you know, they're fun the first couple times, but as you start to understand how the game works and you've played through it a few times, the surprise is gone. That's why my personal favorite is Dungeons and Dragons. And some people were disappointed with this week's episode because they missed the storytelling aspect, and I understand that. Um, but what I really wanted to hone this week and make sure we were talking about was um, painting to life doesn't just mean Dungeons and Dragons models. It can mean these things. It can, be, it can mean your house. You know, putting paint on anything the first time is really going to make it truly your own. And I just want people to remember that, well, yes, it's true you could potentially ruin something, especially if it's original or has value. Like, we're trained as children not to do that. No, you don't color in textbooks. You don't draw on things. You know, you follow the rules. And when you're older, try it. Like, there are times when you can do that and it can turn out much better and I'm sure you might have seen some people in your neighborhood with garage doors that they painted by themselves and I don't mean a flat color or someone who's painted their garage door orange instead of everyone else has standard earth tone <laughs> garage doors and you know as much as that is uh, we're on pink horror by the way uh, for the pink ranger great color as much as that's crazy to say you painted your garage door orange what but really, now you're the guy in the neighborhood with the orange garage door. And if you own it, and if you have confidence and you're happy and orange makes you happy, that's what you should do. And no one can tell you otherwise. So good luck with that. Uh, again, Pink Ranger, horrible camera angle. I apologize again. Uh, she's got big hips. That's nice. Uh, there's her, her scythe that turns into a bow. Again, I hit it with the lead belcher and then did some pink. And that was all done off camera. I think when I originally painted this, I wasn't planning on making an episode of it. And then the person who asked me to paint it said, you should do an episode of it. And at first I was like, no, I don't really understand Power Rangers enough. But then the episode was kind of born of that and, and everything else I've discussed. And coincidentally, after having just done the Bahamut and Tiamat repaints, same kind of deal. I was painting it myself and, and exactly that. I'm so happy with how they turned out. I would never... I would do it a hundred times over, even if you told me you couldn't sell it anymore because it's not original or you ruined it. I disagree. Go on Etsy. Look at what people sell that they've painted. Even things that aren't even that good sell for more than the original is worth. So, again, take a chance. So the Pink Ranger, again, more lead belcher, shoulder pads. This is a really rinse and repeat stage, these Rangers. Um, they have the power coin buckle there on their, on their forearm. It's lead belcher with a little bit of, I think, blue. And then there I'm mentioning the storm holds silver around the trim and like layering on top of her um, her visor and the pterodactyl and the high part of the wristband. I think I might have put some on the lead belcher for the knee pads or the shin pads, shin guards. Okay, and uh, what are we doing here now? Yeah, so working that pterodactyl with that storm host silver, touching those high lines to bring in the the dinosaur features in the helmet yeah one of these days I'd like to do a live stream paint in real time with people but I don't want to do that until there is enough of a following to make it worth everyone's while you know for now I'll just paint them see look at I managed to center her this time <laughs> yeah so my technology will improve as my hobby continues and few birthdays and Christmases under my belt and some more investments into myself and the channel and we should be good. So next up we're going to look at the Megazord. We did all the Rangers and the Megazord. So source pictures, that's what he looks like. There's the primary colors, everything that my, um, my friend wanted to see in his finished Power Ranger. He didn't want any kind of um, rust, weathering, dirt, See, there's another example, another picture. He wanted it to be, he said, they're space alloys. They shouldn't rust. They shouldn't get dirty. So look how many colors is that? Red, green, I'm sorry, red, yellow, blue, black, silver. So let's do it. Start with the lead belcher. Creak. All of the silver pieces, and I use those reference photos. I go through the entire Megazord. Again, he's primed with Corex White. Take a look at his base. You can see I've used pencil to draw a road in a parking lot under his feet. I knew in advance I wanted to show some scale because when he's standing amongst all his Power Rangers, he just looks like he's 15 feet tall or 12 feet tall. Uh, when you, being, if you're a fan of the show, know that he's huge. He's the size of, I don't know, he's about 150 feet tall. 
and those Power Rangers are in his chest, like a little command module. So what can I do to scale that up? Well, I'm going to make a fake faux road underneath him, and I sketched it out with my pencil. And later in this video, we'll see how I accomplished that. It's nothing spectacular. Again, this was earlier on in the year when I was still kind of getting in the hang of things. But I do have some things to share with you with regards to my um, process. So again, lead belcher anywhere there's going to be silver, use the storm hole silver to, uh, to highlight and just lead belch up everything. Again, I did my best with the source materials. Uh, some of those wheels I've seen are black. I just did them silver and ultimately I was happy with the result. So next step is the black. Bad and black again. The sh everywhere, the shoulder, there are those letters uh, on the side. Decals, I paint over them now. I'll come back over them later with yellow and red. Uh, anywhere where there's black, hit it with the black. Um, again, off screen, that's too bad. Take note, I'm holding it with my hand. Um, you know, there's other ways you can hold that with clips and, and I'll get it, but no, in this case, he's a big ass model. Just hold it with your hand and make it right. Put lots of paint on, go on the underside as you would typically. Fortunately, this footage was mostly wasted. It's got a nice image of my hand there. <laughs> yep. Oh, and moving on to Mephist in red. Beautiful red. I love that red. One of my favorite red paints on the market that I've used. Goes on nice, dries nice, fire engine red, and I call it sometimes. But this Megazord is so big, and he's so... F you know, he's got 90 degree angles all over the place. The trick to painting him is just painting him. It's a lot of time. There's a lot to get on there. You might be tempted to use a big brush and just slather it all over the place, so I would suggest you don't. Um, I don't know what size brush I use. Here we are into the Aberdeen Sunset for the yellow Zord. Uh, it looks like maybe a one or a two. I don't buy, I don't have expensive brushes. I use brushes you can get from your hobby shop. Almost everything I do is tabletop ready. You can see I have two yellows on my wet palette there. Aberdeen Sunset and then the other yellow would have been for the Ranger. Actually, come to think of it, that other yellow there, whatever it is, I think was for the Ranger. That's a mistake. Aberdeen Sunset's the more orangey of the two yellows. And I think that that lighter yellow I used for the Ranger. So. You will notice that the Aberdeen Sunset might be a little darker for your Yellow Ranger than that yellow that's on my palette, which unfortunately I don't know what it is. But it's a primary yellow regardless. And even if you used Aberdeen Sunset, it would go nicely. As you see on this Megazord, it does look nice. There's a little cyan on my palette there as well. That is what I used on the um, communicators for the Rangers little splash of that cyan blue and also for the window tinting which we're gonna hit later okay so moving on to the road he's pretty much done um, so I'm using milliput to build up the hills around the road so it's not just flat astral granite it's a technical paint from Citadel it goes on with a little bit of grit inside it I'm just gonna splash it all over the place battlefield grass is gonna go in there as well the Astro Granite's going to dry, then I'm going to paint it black to make my road and my parking lot. I'm going to apply some tasty white glue on top of that milliput for those hills. And then I'm going to apply the grass that you just saw. When it's done, I'm going to apply a Krylon Clear Glaze on the whole thing to give it a really shiny finish. Gives it that uh, super new look. And then ultimately some tasty glue and the battlefield grass on top of that milliput to look like grasslands. Now, as far as the windows, the chest of the power range of the Megazord, it's supposed to be a window. As you can see them sitting there, they can see out of it. In all the source footage, it's gray, but the person who wanted this painted wanted it to look like a window, kind of like I've put up here Optimus Prime from Transformers. How it's got a glue, a glue, right? A blue with a little bit of a refraction of white on there. That's the what kind of effect he wanted for the window. So instead of doing a silver panel, like some of my source material, I started with Thousand Suns Blue to make a window. So as you can see, Thousand Suns Blue, a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of um, gray and um, a couple other blues. 
just look you can add a little bit of white to it to make a scale so there you go just to make some layer to make the glass look a little different in color and from the recesses just layer it up and then a little bit of white on top of it and like I said once it's finished give a spray of the clear coat on that thing and it is done so I hope you have good luck painting your Megazord um, it's a pretty easy model to paint very very basic and easy to obtain online here's some finished shots head on the road the grass the lead belcher and the host the storm host silver side profile very good model very fun to paint especially for a newbie a couple different angles here of the mega zord nice and the finish shot of the Zord with the Power Rangers and the road turned out great. I was happy. So, anyways, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps you work on your Power Ranger. The Power Sword is in there too. I, I think I missed it when I was reading over the, the lines here. Um, good luck with your own model. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions I might be able to answer if you if you missed out. And there are the finished weapons in that still shot as well. I'm, a, I'm GMA Tank. We'll talk to you later, everyone. Bye-bye.